Chapter Nine of the Seven Sleuths Club. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Seven Sleuths Club by Carol Norton. Chapter Nine: A Returned Call. Fifteen minutes later, as the delivery sleigh turned into the drive of the unpretentious Angel home, Betty Bird, who sat near the window, declared, "'Here come the boys!' Then she uttered an exclamation of surprise. "'What is it, Betty?' the others asked, springing up and crowded about her. "'Girls!' Doris exclaimed tragically. "'Something terrible is just about to happen. Alfred Morrison and his sister Geraldine are in the sleigh. What shall we do? Of course she will recognize us, and more than likely she will be mad as a hornet, and we can't blame her much if she is.' The girls were filled with consternation, but before they could form a plan, their front door opened and Bob's cheery voice called, "'Ho, sis, where are you?' So, of course, Bertha had to go into the hall, and he introduced her to the haughty young damsel. Luckily, Geraldine could not see very clearly, having just come in from the dazzling sunlight. After laying aside her fur-lined coat, the unexpected guest was led into the library, where six of the anxious maidens stood about the fireplace. Peggy declared afterwards that she didn't see how Bertha ever got through the introduction so calmly. She was just as sure she would have called someone Matilda Jane Turnip. Of course, Geraldine greeted Doris with utmost warmth, and sat beside her as she exclaimed, "'Oh, Miss Drexel, I had a letter from your cousin Adelaine this morning, and she was so eager to have me meet you. We are next-door neighbours, and have been the best of friends for years. I wonder why I never met you before.' probably because my mother is an invalid and we have been in california and florida so much of the time am i ever so glad to know a friend of adeline's she is the dearest girl isn't she the two were seated apart by themselves and doris dreaded the moment when their visitor should recognize them as the seven who had called upon her in the milkmaid garb the day before once she did look very steadily at peggy and doris noticing this hurriedly asked some question about her city cousin hoping to keep the guests thoughts in safe channels at last alfred rose saying well sister if we are to visit the post office and then walk home before dark we would better be going wait just a moment bertha urged bob has gone out to hitch up our two-seated sleigh oh here he comes now a comfortable roomy sleigh appeared, and Jack said, "'Miss Geraldine, may I accompany you? Alfred and Bob may have the driver's seat.' The girls smilingly consented, and then bade each of the maidens a gracious farewell. When the sleigh, with its jingling bells and prancing horses, was out of sight, the girls sank down on their chairs, and one and all uttered some exclamation. Then Mary Lee said, "'The question before the house is, did she recognise us?' "'I don't see how she could help a recognizing Rose,' Peggy said to Tease. "'She looks very much as she did as Jerusy.' That pretty maiden took the teasing good-naturedly. Then tongues and needles flew, until half an hour later when the boys returned. They were laughing merrily when they entered the room, and bent over the burning log to warm their hands. The girls looked up from their sewing, and Peggy asked eagerly, "'Tell us the worst. Did Geraldine recognize us?' "'Yes, she did,' Bob declared. "'She told Jack that she knew Peggy at once. "'She decided, however, that it had been a good lesson for her, "'and she wished Jack to thank you all for having taught her "'that people may live in the country and not be backwoodsy or rubes.' "'Well, I'm glad she forgives us,' Bertha declared. "'Then, when the boys had again departed, she added, "'But now, to return to the subject we were discussing when we were interrupted. "'Peggy, have you and Doris found a mystery yet for the seventh sleuths to unravel?' nary a mystery doris confessed but it isn't saturday yet you remember we were to have a week there might be some kind of mystery connected with the old wesley house out on the lake road if ever a place looked haunted that one surely does right oh my dear little betty but ghosts and mysteries are two different things some unhappy old man shot himself in that dismal farmhouse and nobody ever wanted to live there after that and so it has fallen to pieces but everybody knew the man and just why he was so sad and discouraged so there isn't any mystery at all where did the boys go bertha looked up suspiciously heavens i hope they aren't anywhere around they might overhear us talking about mysteries and then our new name wouldn't be a secret any more they drove out of the yard i saw them betty still near the window remarked jack had a book probably that one of conan doyle perhaps they're going to return it 
Suddenly, Bertha dropped her sewing, and her eyes were bright. "'Say, girls, we've wondered a million times where the boys hold their secret meetings, but never once did we even suspect that it might be in that dreadful old Wesley place.' "'Bertha Angel, I believe you're right. No one would ever interrupt them there,' Peg shuddered. "'And what better meeting place for a boys' detective club than an old ruin haunted by a ghost that had committed suicide?' Doris commented. "'Well,' Mary sighed, "'we're not likely to find out, since our dear parents will not permit us to prowl around at night unless the boys are along to protect us.' Then Peggy had an idea. "'Girls!' she exclaimed. "'We ought to have some kind of party for Geraldine and Alfred. "'Let's have a moonlight skating party and a sleigh ride combined, "'and when we're out of the way, let's suggest visiting the old ruin. "'If the boys refuse, we will know that they don't want us to see what they have in there. "'If they agree to the plan, then we will know it is not where they hold their secret meetings.' "'Bright idea. "'That will be a jolly lark. "'Let's hope the haughty Geraldine knows how to skate.' "'Shh! Here come the boys to take us home. We mustn't let them suspect our deep-laid plans. We're some sleuths, all right, I'll say.' When the two boys entered the room, they found the girls, except the hostess, warmly wrapped and ready to be taken to their homes. "'Isn't the sunset going to be wonderful this evening?' Mary, in the open door, called over her shoulder, then to the boys, "'When is our next full moon? We girls thought we'd have our annual skating and sleigh-ride party then, and invite the newcomers.' great cried jack it ought to be soon what say bob sure thing that ruddy-cheeked lad agreed then to the girl he was assisting into the sleigh he said in a low voice rosie may i have the first skate and the last and all in between no whispering aloud mary warned as they climbed in and the girls sitting two and three deep the blizzard had disappeared as completely as though it had never been, but the high snowbanks that lined the road and reached to the window sills of the houses remained to testify that it had been some storm, as Bob said. "'Well, we shall have it to thank for a week of good times instead of school,' Mary declared. "'I hope Miss Preen and Professor Lowsley enjoyed being snowed in together.' Much laughter greeted this remark, but Gertrude said rebukingly, "'I think it's shy be of us to make fun of those two. "'Of course they are sort of queer-looking outside, "'but in their hearts and souls they may be just like the rest of us.' "'Trudy, dear, it wouldn't take a detective to know that you're a minister's daughter,' Mary remarked, and then, as the sleigh was stopping in front of her home, she added, "'Now, everybody, decide what to take to the skating party. "'We'll find out about the moon and make our final plans tomorrow. "'All of you come over to my house. Tra-la, good night.'" End of chapter 9